HRM Council voted to keep a list of possible sites for future homeless encampments. Mayor Andy Fillmore had campaigned on not opening any new sites, but today Council rejected his motion to dump the list. Jeff Crabino is with the Dalhousie School of Social Work. Uh, sir, the mayor did not get his way today. His motion was voted down. What do you make of this attempt to uh, rescind the CAO's authority to, to open more of these designated sites? Um, I'm not sure how much we can make out of this. Uh, I, I heard it was quite a close call as well. I mean, I'm not a big fan of encampments. I, I think pretty much everyone believes that you know, these are very, very band-aid approaches, if they're even approaches. Um, we definitely need, you know, more, um, you know, focused styles of housing and 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 in safe spaces for people to live. So, you know, the fact that at least we have the encampment um, angle as possibly, you know, you know that earlier as even like a first aid kit kind of for you know when there really is nothing, nothing available outside of that, then at least we know we still have that kind of on the table. Yeah. I mean, the mayor has said that the end goal here is to phase out the encampments entirely because the, the longer people live there, the more the drain is on their mental and physical health. But do it as more supportive and permanent housing solutions come on stream. So how is the city doing in that regard, in your opinion? Well, you know, I think we always have to contextualize this, that we've had, you know, 35 years of disinvestment in any type of, you know, very thoughtful housing strategy um, around social, affordable housing mechanism. So we we haven't invested. Then comes, a you know, a pandemic. Um, then comes high, high rents and high inflation. So we really are in a perfect storm around um, being able to meet the needs of more than just folks that are living rough or living, you know, in, in the homeless sector. Just, you know, a lot of other folks are also really, really struggling now just with survival. So how we're doing, I mean, I think there's a lot of very good initiatives out there. We have increased amounts of supportive housing, affordable housing structures but just not enough after 35 odd years of disinvestment. So it's going to take quite a while. And we have, you know, we have increased folks that are kind of suffering kind of right now. So it's much more visible and it's going to take some time to really kind of provide adequate, adequate kind of, you know, sanctuary for everyone. And as far as the shelters go, the mayor said today that there is space in the shelters. Would, would you agree with that? So the, the most kind of traditional larger shelters that we know of, like, you know, that have been around for years are always full. There's no movement in there. Yes, the kind of newer uh, sites that kind of have been, you know, are, are, have been kind of set up for extreme weather or for the kind of to, to work with folks that are experiencing housing shortages in the encampments. There is space here and there available. But we also have to understand that there's going to be a population that will not kind of be served in the proper ways in spaces like that. And people just won't go there. So I think we really need this is a good time to be thinking about providing supports that are a bit more in innovative and creative that will allow for folks that um, could kind of feel safe that as you know vis-a-vis -vis how they feel safe in encampments right now. And as far as those encampments go two of the designated locations Cogswell Park and Geary Street uh, Green Space are now we're told at capacity or over capacity. What kind of challenges is that causing? Uh, well, so, I mean, it's, it's, it's a good question. It's hard to answer because, I mean, again, encampments aren't safe, dignified spaces to begin with. However, I think what the municipality has been trying to do over the past year or two is to at least carve out some mechanisms like numbers, uh, being able to provide you know, drinking water, sanitation, uh, just to make things a bit more livable and a bit more protected. So when those mechanisms kind of fail, so now we have overcrowding, yeah, it can be more problematic, right? I mean, I mean, people live in encampments. Uh, some of them are really experiencing some deep, deep trauma. And there's mental health and addiction dynamics. And then just the fact that, you know, every day you're 
getting up from a tent. Um, you know, some folks are working, some folks are trying to figure out other ways to survive. You come back at night, you go back to your tent. It's extremely frustrating. Frustrating. It's not a healthy way to live, and that kind of you know causes some you know increased tensions. And then there's of course tensions with folks you know in the community around these encampments, which is you know also deeply understandable. So uh, you know the idea that at least there can be um, initiatives to kind of spread out the encampment so people feel a little bit safer uh, is always a good thing. Okay, and just before I let you go, as we all know, the weather's getting colder out there. How yeah. much better prepared is the city to help the homeless this year? Well, we, we know we have, you know, bit more initiatives like tiny homes and pallet uh, shelters, which are very, very significant as kind of a step above kind of a, a living rough. Um, but we just, we don't have enough of them. So we need that stock. Uh, I would love to see like encampments kind of being taken away as an option because there's more affordable and dignified places to live. Are we better equipped this year? I think a little bit we are. Um, I think we have a deeper understanding of kind of why folks may or may not want to kind of get into the shelter world. And I think we have more of those options like pallet houses and, um, and, and tiny home initiatives that at least will take some of the folks that were living in campus last year. All right, we'll leave it there. Jeff Crabineau, thank you very much. Thank you.